it's Asherita from OneThingLearn.com, and today I want to share with you a new method I've been using to study the Bible based on my own personal quiet time. It's called the Feast Method, How to Feast on the Word of God, and we'll be going through this together. I really discovered that it helps us deepen in our intimacy and our relationship with Jesus um, through daily devotions, so I'm excited to show this to you, so let's dig in. All right, so grab your Bible and a notebook. Um, and find a quiet place where you'll be uninterrupted. Go ahead and, you know, silence your phone, whatever else you need to do. Because when we approach scripture, we want to be focused. Um, so looking at the feast method, the very first letter is F for focus. Ask God to focus your heart and your mind on him. Um, asking him, what do you want me to learn today? And this is just a great step to remind us that um, scripture isn't just us sitting down with the Bible and, you know, um, doing <laughs> a, a study on it. It's interacting with the living word of God and asking God to speak to us through it. Um, so what I like to do is I write down F for focus um, and I start with prayer. And then I choose a passage to focus on during my study time. Um, and I like to write it down. Right now we'll be studying Psalm 42, verses 1 through 2. So I'll go ahead and write down those two verses. So after we've written down the passage, um, we move on to the next letter, which is E for engage. Um, so we read the passage, we write it down, and then we ask observations. Um, we make observations. So I like to ask the five journalism questions plus one extra. So who, what, when, where, why, and then how. Um, and that just helps to kind of get into the passage and dig a little bit deeper than what is at surface level. You can also um, diagram the passage or do a word study. Reading the passage out loud might help, or doodling it. Um, I'm not artistic at all, but some people are really good at um, just engaging that right side of their brain when they study the Bible. Um, you can act it out. You can look for patterns like repetition, comparison, contrast, um, cause and effect. Um, it's also helpful to check a translation, like a different translation that you're reading, sometimes different um, translations will pull out nuances of the passage um, and help you see things differently. So um, this word pants, for example, in the NASB might be translated longs or desires in the NIV or King James. Um, and then also research cultural and historical backgrounds if you can. This is helpful if you have a study Bible, you might find it in the notes section at the bottom. Um, but look for information on the author, um, recipients or like the original audience, setting, purpose, theme, tone, all those things will really help as we write down observations. So I'm going to go ahead and just write down some of these things we talked about using the tools that we discussed. Okay, so um, I took some time to go through the passage, um, and actually not just those two verses, but really for context, looking at the rest of the chapter, um, and wrote down some observations. So the writer was obviously in a spiritual desert, panting for water brooks, for streams of water, panting, desiring, thirsting. Um, and then I looked through the rest of the chapter for um, his position toward God and the different kind of emotions or um, actions that he takes so panting for God, longing, thirsting, crying, reminiscing about um, fellowship with God in the past, souls downcast, disturbed, then he's reassured and hopeful, then again suffering, mourning and oppressed, pleading with God, seeking, then anticipating um, future deliverance. And as I was writing these down, remember I talked about looking for patterns, as I was writing these things down, it occurred to me um, that he's so honest with his emotions, um, both toward, you know, honest with himself, but also honest with God. And there's no like fake, glossy smile, like this is real stuff. Um, and yet he observes God's faithfulness again and again. He says, um, why are you in despair? 
Why so disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. Um, and yet there's, so there's this note of um, hope in the end. So that's kind of the step of engaging. We're looking at what does the passage say? And, oh, and for like all these different tools or techniques that I mentioned, you can find tutorials on my website on onethingwrong.com. Um, just go to forward slash study and you'll learn how to do all these different steps too. So then we go to A, which is assess the main message of the passage. The main idea. So what did this mean to the original audience? Um, this psalm is a maskil of the sons of Korah. So it was a worship song that was written for people, for the Israelites when they went to the temple to praise God. Um, and so in context, this is um, a poem or a song written to give God's people words to know, okay, how how should I pray or talk about um, my life when I'm in a dry season? So you would write down the main idea of this passage for the original audience. So what I wrote down is when God's people were in a dry spiritual place, they were given words to turn to God in honesty and with hope. Um, so this is what, you know, how this song was used by God's people in the past, what it meant to the original audience. So F is for focus. We focus our hearts and our minds on him, and we write down one specific passage. We engage the text by writing down observations. We assess the main idea. What did it mean to the original audience? Um, and this is all before trying to apply it to our lives. That's the next step. So we ask the Holy Spirit to spark transformation in our lives by asking, how does this apply to me? Um, so if I like my applications to be smart, so specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Um, so looking at, you know, today or this week, how can this apply to my life? So I'll write down a personal application for that. So the very last step um, is, you know, we don't just want to end this at an academic study. Um, the purpose of scripture is for us to grow deeper in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Unless this Bible information leads to God adoration, reading the Bible is pointless, really. So after we hear God speak to us through his word, we then respond to him with praise, confession, and thanksgiving. Um, so this is what I'll go ahead and do here. We turn, so the T here is turn your mind and heart toward God and worship. How should I respond to God? And I just think this is such a beautiful place to pause and reflect on the fact that God wants us to be honest with him and he can handle um, all the emotions that he created us with. He can handle our happiness and our joy and excitement, but also our despair and depression and anger and sadness um, he wants us to come to him with all of that. Um, and that's just an incredible reason to praise him for. So even as we wrap up our time in the word of God, we continue to turn our hearts toward him with whispered prayers and songs of praise. You know, as we go about our day, we continue to come back and meditate on what we feasted on, on scripture. Um, and God does the work of transformation in our lives as we meditate and dwell on the word of God. So this is the feast method of studying the Bible. You can find this bookmark um, for free. If you have any questions, feel free to just contact me there. I'd be happy to help you. Again, this is Asherita, and I hope you have a blessed day.